don't think twice before reaching for your sword, do you? <laughs> do you have any idea how long I've been tracking these targets? And now you get to stake a claim! <laughs> you think you're stronger because you got to them first? <laughs> Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Uh, what? That's right. I heard the commotion and came as swiftly as I could, only to find you two already fighting the Fatui. Not only that, you are making quick work of them, too. If I didn't make my move, you would have been able to take all the credit. Still, I'm glad you're unscathed. Confronting that number of Fatui at once can be dangerous. Uh, sorry, Paimon doesn't understand what you mean, but thanks for your concern. Concern? Why would I be concerned for the safety of my arch enemies? Arch enemies? Wait a minute! You were saying how glad you were that we were unscathed a second ago! By which I meant, if you were injured, I'd have to escort two strangers guilty of stealing my targets all the way back to Mondstadt. Which would mean you'd cause me even more trouble. My vengeance would be swifter still! Huh? So that's how you see all this? Yes. That's me. Hyman thinks she's pretty strange. Although at least we can communicate with her. You dare to call someone you've just met strange? Forget the aristocracy. That's rude even by normal standards. Speaking of which, how do you know my name? This is the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius. And speaking of rude, we're trying to investigate an aristocrat named Schubert Lawrence. He's so obsessed with etiquette that he's not even willing to speak with us. <laughs> I understand now. That's my uncle, all right. But why do you mean to investigate him? <sighs> I see. <laughs> you have some nerve to faming a family member right in front of me. I will have vengeance for this, too. No, no, no! This is an assignment from Master Jean! It's just an investigation, that's all! To the everyday citizens of Mondstadt, everyone in the Lawrence clan is scum. It's natural for rumors and unwarranted gossip to lead to such suspicion. Hard to avoid such a reputation when you're known as the ruthless rulers of old Mondstadt. Oh, so that's what you think of me? Hm. Yet another transgression to avenge. But... didn't you see it first? Oh... <laughs> Curious. We've only just met, and you've already given me three causes for vengeance. It's been a while since I've encountered anyone as interesting as you. I assume you need me to teach you the conduct of the Lawrence clan. Only then will you finally be able to communicate with my uncle, correct? That's right! Amber told us to come and talk to you! Well then, let's begin your training immediately. It'll be easier to train when we're back in Mondstadt. We'll require other people. We can put that aside for now. Besides, if it's the Acting Grandmaster's assignment, and Amber's the one who recommended me, I should comply. Oh, you're Eula of the Lawrence clan, right? This can't be good. <clears throat> you there, lowly laborer. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility... Uh... What comes next? Uh... Oh, right. By solemnly kneeling to the ground with utmost sincerity. Huh? I can't make heads or tails of anything you're saying. <sighs> Hold on. What did they always teach me? Whenever a dispute arises, protection of your family's prestige and dignity always takes precedence. <sighs> Got it. <clears throat> As a lowly commoner, you shall maintain absolute reverence when speaking with those under which you so graciously toil. How dare you speak in such a manner? Ugh, is everyone from the Lawrence clan so strange? The days of the Lawrence clan's tyranny have long passed. I don't care what you're trying to do, just beat it. Like I said, I don't care what you're doing. I have nothing to say to any member of the Lawrence clan. And here's a word of advice. I wouldn't be caught dead walking too closely with any one of their like in Mondstadt. 
that's all, I'll be going. I'm afraid I won't be able to control myself if we talk any longer. Uh, hey, hey! Don't leave! Uh, halt! Uh, mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Wow, the Lauren's name really does carry a terrible reputation. <sighs> Never mind him. I could have predicted as much. Let's find someone else. You there, lowly worker. I... Yeah, I've already heard it all before. Look, just spare me the time. Our answer's always the same. We've got nothing to say to the likes of you. I mean, seriously, can't you just take a hint? Please calm down. We don't want to cause any trouble. Ah, I know she's a knight of Favonius, and that the knights wouldn't misplace their trust, but the name Lawrence carries too much weight with it. Even to this very day, the descendants of the Lawrence clan are still scheming to reclaim Mondstadt and reinstate their aristocratic rule. And if that wasn't enough, here you are purposefully using their awkward way of speaking just to put on an act? Don't you care for the feelings of us ordinary folk? You have a point. But mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. <laughs> huh? You wanna fight? Listen here, I may be no match for you, but I'll be sure to lodge a complaint with the Knights of Favonius. I'm sorry, but I want her to understand that I'm serious. Listen here, if you don't want things to get more unpleasant, then you'd better just stop. Forget it. There's no point in quarreling any further. Let's go. It's all right. This happens quite often. Let's find someone else to talk to. Uh, Paimon thinks we've seen enough now. Let's just stop. Actually, Paimon thinks we should apologize for asking you to demonstrate for us. We had no idea the feelings between the Lawrence clan and the people of Mondstadt were so bitter. <laughs> what can we do? The Lawrence name is already a dirty word among every household in Mondstadt. Even three-year-olds know the story. I see this kind of attitude all the time. <sighs> Don't worry. What with me being a knight of Favonius, they're usually willing to speak a few words with me. Perhaps my aristocratic manner of speech provoked them today. Believe me, it's not a big issue. So this is the way things are normally for you? There's no need for them to direct their anger at you personally. That's the way things are. Perhaps it's just fate for those who have made mistakes. Accepting punishment is only fair, right? But when your family has committed atrocities, I'm afraid there's no easy path to reconciliation. As memories are carried in the city breeze, the faults of such grievances are passed from one generation to the next. It is now my turn to bear this burden. At least I have a means of living a relatively normal life compared to the elders of my family. I have nothing to be discontented about. Why were you so willing to try and demonstrate for us? Oh, that reminds me. That last person will not escape my vengeance either. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Just think of it as something I like to do. But unfortunately, you probably didn't learn much from those conversations. It seems we have no other choice but to find more people to talk to. Ah, uh, no need! Besides, the Traveler's pretty sharp, and nothing gets in our way on an adventure! Paimon thinks we got the gist of it now! Right? Right? We'll just have to roll with it for now. Let's just keep Eula from getting anyone else riled up. Well then, I'm glad you learned something. You're already halfway toward mastering aristocratic conduct. A proper manner of speech is more aesthetic than anything else. It stems from their taste for refinement. But we must also practice your bearing. I have a very effective way of training for this. Come with me to Dragonspine. Ah, you finally arrived. There's no time to spare, so we'll begin with our first lesson. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear up first. Otherwise, it'll keep bugging us. <sighs> so that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. Uh, you need to be in the right mood for vengeance. I already have a long list of vengeance to exact. 
Even if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? Absolutely not. Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. But you needn't worry, at least not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, a man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. But if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech, and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation! Mark my words! Vengeance will be mine! <sighs> Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Paimon learned it from you! And didn't you say not to call others strange? It seems you don't respect the rules of your own clan! No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Morning dew is not uncommon, so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value, yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Paimon's confused. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family, dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. It sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So, another thing to remember. Aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, you then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait! This is all too abstract! Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations. Ah, very well. Come with me. We'll choose some bystanders to converse with. It's so cold! Does aristocrat training really need to be done here? If you wish to truly achieve the dignified conduct of an aristocrat, you must learn to remain composed and elegant even amidst harsh conditions. For example, you can see that part of the path up ahead is quite difficult to traverse. But a well-trained aristocrat would not only effortlessly proceed forward, but do so without a stain on their garment and their elegance fully intact. Hyman thinks we've left the realm of aristocrats and entered the realm of adventuring. Compared to what we've already seen, this should be a piece of cake. Uh-huh. This is where you can finally apply some of your adventuring knowledge. <laughs> you look pretty confident this time. All right, let's get started. Remember, you must be graceful and elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most unsightly. Not bad. A lot better than I had anticipated, at least. <sighs> Hyman almost didn't make it through! Good thing we didn't get stuck. Um, so, are we aristocrats now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourselves. We've only just begun. This scenario was relatively simple. In the face of a real battle, one would seldom have a chance to stop and evaluate the situation. 
There's a leyline monolith just up ahead that will attract nearby monsters. True elegance is the ability to calmly yet swiftly make decisions in the heat of battle. My family set only the highest expectations for me, even as a child. Let's proceed, shall we? This is the Leyline Monolith. Go ahead, activate it. But be careful not to get launched into the air or frozen while fighting. That would be most unsightly. You failed this time. What a shame. But not to worry. It's just training after all. Let's try again. is order. Well done. Your performance was most impressive. And you managed to remain calm even in these grueling dragon spine surroundings. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if even I could have done the same. Given such an outstanding performance, it seems there is little left for me to teach you. Like Paimon said, adventuring is our specialty! Uh, <laughs> so, that's it for our training, right? Then let's get out of Dragonspine before Paimon turns into a popsicle! <sighs> Hold on. I was commending the Traveler's performance just now. You, on the other hand, seem to have made no progress at all. Uh, what? You mean Paimon was also part of the training? Yes, of course. You were frantically flying and dashing about throughout the entire thing. Not an elegant sight at all. Did you even listen to anything I was trying to teach you? Yeah, that's it. It's too cold here. Uh, besides, Paimon was paying attention to the Traveler. Whatever the reason, not heeding my instructions. A cause for vengeance, perhaps. Huh. Now, drink this. Huh? What is it? <gasps> Are you trying to poison Paimon? Certainly not. It's warm milk. Didn't you just say that you were freezing? Drink it and it'll help warm you up. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, are you still planning on the whole vengeance thing? If I wasn't, then why would I care about you being cold? If you turned into a Paimon popsicle, that would ruin my plans for vengeance now, wouldn't it? So, dear friend, don't die on me out here. Ah! Paimon knew something was off! All in the name of vengeance. No need to thank me. Now then, given that your training is complete, it's time we return to Mondstadt. Our last step will be preparing a cordial gift to present to my uncle when you meet him. I already have something in mind. Let's pay Sarah a visit at Good Hunter. Don't touch me! Get out of my way! I'll leave on my own! It seems we finally caught up with you. This place is crawling with Fatui. Oh, it's you. It seems your investigation went well. Aha! I see now. So you're the one that taught them our etiquette. And I thought you despised such pleasantries. Furthermore, there is a rule in our family. Such traditions are never to be taught to outsiders. Ah yes, rings a bell. So what? I had no reason not to teach them. You have brought shame to our family and ruined my plans. It's all for naught now. I know that you poured great efforts into these plans, Uncle. But you were well aware that it was not the right thing to do. As a Knight of Favonius, 
I cannot overlook your actions. Knight of Favonius? Let's get one thing straight. I am your uncle, and you are a member of the Lawrence clan. You should strive to restore your family's glory. You still have a chance. Defeat every Knight of Favonius here, and leave with me. Then I shall plead with the family to spare you, and give you a new beginning. So just to be clear, you want a Knight of Favonius to attack the Knights of Favonius? I shall say this one last time. You are not a Knight of Favonius. You are a descendant of the Lawrence clan. The blood of the Lawrence clan flows in your veins. You must comply with the will of the family. Since when have I ever complied with the will of the family? Why, you... you unruly maid! If anyone should be angry, it should be me. As a member of the Lawrence clan, you knowingly plotted against the city of Mondstadt and threatened its safety. Had you ever stopped to consider the trouble it would bring to so many people? Had you considered how many enemies you would make trying to keep the plans under wraps? Y you dare lecture me! That's right. In the name of the family that you so dearly revere, Uncle Schubert. I've never experienced the age of glory you always speak of. And I've never understood our family's incessant pursuit of it. But I am capable of discerning right from wrong. And I deeply understand what freedom means to the people of Mondstadt. The Lawrence clan should never and will never become what you've dreamed it to be. Ugh. Oh, the disgrace of it all! How could such a rebellious monster emerge from our own family? <laughs> Things are starting to get pretty hysterical here. Politeness and elegance seem to have gone out the window. That's enough fuss for today. You two, take him away. The Honorary Knight and I have other matters to attend to. <sighs> Given that you've already taken action, I assume you've come across some conclusive evidence? Hyman took a peek at their diagram. Your uncle had mapped out all of the Knight's patrol routes and marked out key information about Mondstadt. <sighs> and there was me thinking that he was just another elder of the family. And a lazy one at that. I never suspected he could stoop this low. So stubborn. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine. Let's discuss this later. Our first priority is recovering that diagram. Death. This must be it. They may very well have already made a copy of it. But without my uncle as their puppet, there'd be no use in them attacking the city. The Fatui wouldn't have relied only on your uncle. True. But if their plan had hinged purely on taking Mondstadt by force, as opposed to with the help of a puppet, they could have spared themselves the trouble. The Fatui are dishonest, but they wouldn't go as far as to start an open war. Their opposition wouldn't just be Mondstadt alone. Anyway, I'll inform the acting Grandmaster. She'll know how to handle things from here. Oh well, yeah! You suddenly appeared at just the right moment! Yeah, about that. Because you stole my targets by attacking the Fatui I'd been tracking earlier, I came to exact my vengeance. You tried to do my job for me, and I'm here to return the favor. Finally! After all this time, Paimon understands what you're saying! In reality, you sense that something might happen to us during our investigation! You were worried about us and your uncle, so you brought a team to take a look! My purpose was vengeance. Don't twist the story. <laughs> you don't look too bright, but it turns out you have a knack for scheming. And mark my words, I'll remember that. Hey! What do you mean Paimon doesn't look too bright? You have seeded a deep enmity between us. Just you wait. Even if you were to be completely destroyed, I would never forget you. Bring it on! <laughs> I like your fighting spirit. I'll take this diagram back to the Knights of Favonius and take it from here. Sure! Well, see you around! That you will. And make sure not to steal my targets next time. <laughs> <laughs>